Today marks my 2000th consecutive login day here in Rise of Kingdoms, which is honestly a milestone that I don't think I ever anticipated reaching when I first started playing this game back in 2018. And if we take a look at my markswoman recruit time, you can see that I first joined the game on October 25th, 2018, which was exactly 2022 days ago, which means I have missed logging in 22 times since the day I first started playing Rise of Kingdoms, which means on average, I missed one login day every three months. So I've logged in for 89 out of 90 days consecutively throughout the entire time that I've been playing this game. And I wanted to make this video because it seems like in the community right now, a lot of people are talking about content creators quitting the game. We saw that Shinji got zeroed in his KBK and then Chiskel made a video reacting to that. And then he also made a video reacting to another YouTuber who made a video talking about all the different rise of kingdoms, content creators that have quit over the years and he himself addressed when he might quit the game or what might cause him to do so at some point in the future. And I think Shappy Gaming made a video talking about other creators quitting. And so I think that sentiment is going around the community right now. And I think that this 2000 consecutive login day milestone is a really good time for me to make a video for myself talking about why I started playing the game, what continues to bring me back to the game and why I continue to play it to this day. And then I want to touch on some of the reasons why other players and other content creators have quit the game in the past. And then finally, I'll talk about my feelings of burnout, whether or not I'm going to be quitting the game and pretty much everything in between. But first, what's going on, guys? Cheers. Did you know that 69% of you guys watching this video right now are not subscribed? We are so close to 70,000 subscribers, which is honestly insane. When I first started playing this game 2000 days ago, I did not think that I would have a YouTube channel like this and so thank you guys so much i started making youtube videos when i was a very small kid and i feel like 100,000 subscribers is some sort of validation but the first milestone is 70k so please consider clicking the button it's free and drop a thumbs up while you're down there to push this video out into the algorithm so other players might see it now this video might be a little bit of a story time a little bit of a ramble so if you guys want to sort of get comfy get a snack get a drink whatever oh yo we hit level 50 on lucerne scrolls on camera let's go baby anyway i have no idea how long this video is going to be but I want to start by talking about why I started playing rise of kingdoms if you guys don't know I started playing the game back in 2018 and prior to that this YouTube channel was focused almost entirely on call of duty gameplay I was playing primarily just team deathmatch free for all and posting like commentary videos some guides for call of duty things like that and I did that for a really long time and that never really got me anywhere I had like maybe 6,000 subscribers, 5,000 subscribers, something like that. When I first started posting rise of kingdoms content, but I didn't post my first rise of kingdoms video until January 2nd of 2020. So it was actually over a year that I played rise of kingdoms just as a player. And eventually I started making content. But if I didn't start this game to make content, why did I start playing the game? Well, the reason was because when this game first came out, a lot of people that I worked with back then I worked at Apple. And back then there was probably like 30 or 40 people at my job that all downloaded this game together and they all made an alliance and we were all playing together. And when I would go on my breaks on my, you know, short breaks, my lunch breaks, whatever, I would always see, you know, a couple of people huddled around talking about the game, playing the game together. At that time, we, there was no KBK. We were just in home kingdom and there was a, a big civil war that was going on. There was a player who goes by the name of, I think it was super Mosey or Mozio or something like that. I think back then he was like 80 million power, hundred million power, something like that. And for, for then that was like giga Chad. That was like mega. Well, one of the strongest players in the game. Okay. And he basically was going rogue with, a, I believe a Russian Alliance and you know, we kind of had these really fun battles in home kingdom. It was a civil war. It was a whole crazy thing, uh, you know? And so I saw a lot of my coworkers playing this game and I wanted to get in on the fun, right? I think one of the coolest parts about multiplayer games is having a group of people to play with, right? And at that time I was addicted to clash Royale. I actually still have clash Royale on my phone. I don't really play it much very often. I think I logged in a few months ago and I played it for a few days and then I stopped again. I was heavily invested 
in clash royale and i was actually getting up there in the rankings i was you know not like top 100 in the in the world or anything like that but i was i was getting up there especially for someone who had only spent like 80 dollars on that game over the course of a few years like i was very 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 low spender back then for clash royale and i was performing really well and i was super addicted to that game but I saw a lot of people that I worked with playing Rise of Kingdoms, so I downloaded the game. I played it by myself for like a week or two, and then eventually I basically talked to one of my coworkers and was like, okay, well, what kingdom are you guys in? And I think it was 1062, if I'm not mistaken, was the kingdom that we all started in. I didn't know what I was doing back then. I had watched uh, some Chisco videos, some Gecko Gaming videos, some Shinchi videos, some Legend Roni videos, and I basically just started playing the game with all of my coworkers. And over time, you know, a lot of my coworkers did eventually start to fall off. Some of them weren't, you know, very serious about the game. A lot of them quit. But I remember when they first implemented Ark of Osiris. I remember that day very, very vividly because the first time that we signed up for Ark of Osiris, we all actually met at a bar across the street from where we worked and we rented this really long table, right? And this was like a, a nice German bar. So they had all these different beers and they had like pretzels with cheese and all this stuff. We all went there after work, right? I think it was like 7 p.m. or something like that. And we actually did our first Ark of Osiris, like the first ever Ark of Osiris for our kingdom in person with, you know, everyone there and it was so much fun i remember like I've, I've never really had that type of experience in any sort of game before right like surely you know in the past i have played like mario kart and smash brothers and these other types of like party games where you get like you know five or six people you know at, at the house and you're playing together you're passing on the controller and that's a lot of fun but to have like you know 20 30 people all get together all at the same time to play you know Ark of Osiris in person it was like it was just such a, a a crazy like moment right it was like it actually felt like an MMO experience in a mobile game and from that moment on I was hooked like the community for this game got me hooked now had I not started playing with people I knew would I have you know really gotten invested in the game probably not truthfully i don't spend that much time in alliance chat i never talk in lost kingdom chat like very very rarely i'll drop i'll drop like an emoji or something like that i typically avoid lost kingdom chat it's just way too toxic it's it's awful but i'm really not the type to like go out of my way to make friends in games so what was really nice was just having a bunch of people that I already knew playing the game together. And it kind of gave me that community feeling. And like I said, over time, you know, some people started to drop off. They were more casual players. They got zeroed. And I would say there was probably about seven or eight of us that really stuck with it for at least like a year or so. And then eventually some of those people started to log in less and less. And all of a sudden there was just me and maybe one or two other people that I was working with who were still playing the game. And after about a year of playing the game i had a couple decisions to make right like there was a civil war a lot of the people that i knew in the game quit the game and so i had to decide like am i going to stay in my home kingdom or am i going to migrate somewhere and eventually i did end up leaving the kingdom because i didn't really know anybody left that i actually like played with in real life one of the people that i ended up following around for a while was rk i'm sure at this point i'm surprised he hasn't tried to get rid of me you know but it is what it is bro you are stuck with me all right but he was in the uh, original kingdom that i started playing in and i eventually migrated to another kingdom and ever since then we've kind of pieced together this like small group of people that we've been playing with for a really long time and it's sort of shifted for me being a game where the community was people I knew in real life and I sort of like assimilated into the rise of kingdoms community and like met really cool people that I still play with to this day in rise of kingdoms and the community in the game is what keeps me here but the community that I had already known the people in my real life are what brought me to the game and got me to like keep playing for a few months now like I said after a year I did start making my own content for the game and the reason for this was very very simple because i was very invested in the game and at that point i feel like i knew the game really well right like i feel like i was super well versed i knew a lot about all the different commanders i knew all about like what you should do as a beginner all this other stuff and i realized that you know i was actually playing rise of kingdoms more and more and i was playing call of duty less and less and this was because in 2019 they released modern warfare which is i mean that was basically the, the end of call of duty for me like when they changed the graphics engine i know people like warzone and you know the battle royale stuff is fine there's a whole niche for that to me the battle royale scene fortnite's the best battle royale in my opinion okay warzone was okay but that changed call of duty forever and there hasn't been a good call of duty since black ops 
three and i will die on that hill that was the last good call of duty and it's not even close bro it is not even close everything after that has been just a shell of the of its former self truthfully and so i realized that i can't keep making videos for a game franchise that in my mind was just dead it was it was it's it was garbage and it's been garbage for years at that point like black ops 4 was a joke like infinite warfare like these were just absolute just dumpster fires of video games like basically unplayable to be honest with you like infinite warfare was unplayable in my mind so i decided you know what i'm gonna post a video for rise of kingdoms because i knew the game well i like making youtube videos i would i would be making youtube videos to this day even if I made zero dollars off of it. Okay. So I made a video for rise of kingdoms and it did really well. It started getting like thousands of views, which for me, you know, back then my videos were averaging about 200 views. Like a good day would be like a 300 view video and a bad day would be like a 90 view video. Okay. And so for me, like getting thousands of views was crazy. And what I found out later was that, you know, when you typed in rise of kingdoms, beginner's guide, my video was the first thing that came up. And because the video was like, I think it was like 40. Let me take a look here. It was 38 minutes long. And right now it has over a hundred thousand views to this day. It's still one of my better performing videos, but because the video was so long and because it was the first thing that came up in the search engine, you know, I got a lot of traffic from that. And a lot of people started subscribing to my channel because I made, you know, a couple of rise of kingdoms videos. And then I followed that up with a video talking about Solomar getting zeroed because I, I'm going to be completely honest here. I'm guilty. I saw Chisco post a video about that and it got a lot of views. And I was like, well, I can talk about that. And I thought, well, maybe, maybe I can do like the search engine optimization better than him. Turns out i can't that video didn't do very well it got well it got 7,000 views for back then that was crazy for me especially because the game was really small but after that video i thought okay well what's another good like beginner ish type of video that i can make and i thought well i'll just talk about the best commanders in the game so i made a video talk about the best commanders in the game and that was a 36 minute video and boom that ended up getting a lot of views off of search engine results and that video to this day is at 88,000 views so my first two videos really popped off for my channel size and a a lot of people started subscribing for rise of kingdoms and i thought okay well i'll just keep posting rise of kingdoms content then if that's what people want to watch and like i said earlier that was in january of 2020 and you guys know what happened just two months later the world basically shut down and i was working from home and because my apartment was so small there wasn't really much that i could do for apple at at that time i was a technician i typically would help diagnose you know customer devices if there was something wrong if they were cracked or they didn't turn on whatever but I couldn't really do that remotely and so for about three months we kind of I just sat inside and I did some like training modules but I had almost as much free time as I've ever had in my entire life to just focus on YouTube right and I was still getting a paycheck at that time God bless Apple for not firing people that was like to this day I'm forever grateful for that and I thought in my mind I'm like okay I have however long I'm going to be stuck at home where I'm getting paid to stay at home basically with almost nothing to do. We did like a zoom call every day, but it wasn't that it wasn't anything. Right. And I thought, well, this is kind of my only chance as a grown up, as an adult to like really try making YouTube content like full time without the risk of quitting a job, right? Like that's always the risk of going full-time with YouTube is you have to quit your job to go full-time. And if you don't make money, then you, then you're like, you have bills to pay. Right? So I thought, well, this is a very unique opportunity where I can try this full-time thing for like one to three months while still getting paid and who knows what happens. So every day I was pumping out a new rise of kingdoms video. Cause I thought like, okay, well, this is my only chance. I got to make the best of this. So I would post guides for every commander. I would post guides for different events. I would post guides for Marauder, whatever it is. I would just try to come up with a new video every day. And that's what I went with. And by the time I went back to work, you know, it was part-time I was, you know, at that time, obviously I didn't get sponsored until, you know, a few months ago, but I was making, you know, a few hundred dollars a month off of ad revenue and also through like affiliate links for games and some other things. And then I started to get my first like sponsors. I remember I worked with age of apes. There were some other things um i think infinite galaxy reached out and that was crazy and that's kind of you know the birth of omni arc as a rise of kingdoms youtuber but that begs the question like why did i stick with this game for so long if for the first year it wasn't for content and like i said you know i like making youtube videos so making content for this game was really a no-brainer for me i just i love talking about games that i enjoy playing and so what is it about the game that really keeps me playing and interested well first of all the 
community aspect we've already touched on but also the collection aspect i think rise of kingdoms nailed it just so so well collecting different historical figures is very satisfying for me just the theme of the game being like the feudal age and older basically and having all of these like recognizable figures from history and being able to collect them and then on top of that they have these different skills that you can sort of theory craft and you can build different armies and just to me that, that felt really really good i felt like there was a certain amount of control that i had over like picking the best armies and i felt like especially at the beginning of the game you know a player who knows what they're doing versus a player who doesn't know what they're doing you can really be like i mean you could pop off in pvp that part i love but then they've also added more systems right like progressing my gear on my commanders feels really good to me progressing even just my city at the start of it right like my first goal when i first started playing was unlock tier five units like that took me like over a year well over a year to get tier five units and i basically only focused on getting tier five units i didn't unlock any commanders i didn't spend any gems on anything I basically did everything wrong because I didn't the game was brand new nobody had min max the whole system so either way basically you know just the progression through the the technology and the buildings and everything the collection aspect is what got me like hooked and then the community is what kind of kept me here and I think that that makes you know it makes for a really great game it makes for a really good experience it's a unique experience that you don't get from a lot of multiplayer games these days and then on top of all of that I was able to incorporate all of those things with a passion that I already loved something that I would be doing anyway and that is making YouTube content right and people watch me for rise of kingdoms content which is like a win-win for me right so that's why I'm still here and look I'm gonna be honest at this point making videos is my full-time job I kind of went full-time back in October of 2023 and it's a big risk I'm gonna be honest with you guys and I'm still like unsure if that was the right call I think it was certainly from a mental health perspective I'm much happier now than I was working at at my job because basically I was working you know 30 to 40 hours a week and then I would I was spending probably 20 or 30 hours a week on YouTube content right so like I was really basically working two jobs and going crazy for like a year and a half and so that's kind of where I was at before so from a mental health perspective I'm in a much better place uh, or just not really mental health but just stress wise I'm I'm less stressed now from a job perspective than I was back then but I will admit that when you do something like this as a job you definitely lose a little bit of of the the excitement I guess right because you feel like you have to do something rather than just doing it because you want to do it and I'm not trying to say like this is a hard job or anything like that I think there are aspects of it that do require skill you know it's honestly difficult to pull in an audience when you have to compete with so many other people who are making content about the same game or just competing with other games in general or other you know competing for people's attention on the YouTube platform, right? If my video comes up next to a Mr. Beast video, people are going to watch Mr. Beast. He's just better at getting, uh, at getting, you know, attention. But that really begs the question, like, you know, I've been doing this for a few years now as a part-time job. Now it's a, now it's a full-time job. And I, I look at the other creators who have quit over the years, right? We had Legend Roni. He left. We had Dragothian leave. We had Gecko Gaming leave. We had Wick Gaming stepped away from making content. I think Shinshi is pretty much, I mean, I don't, I didn't watch his video, but it seems like based on his uploads the past few months it seems like he's pretty much done with the game as well at least for now so we've seen a lot of these content creators and these aren't small creators like they have you know over 10,000 subs in the case of Shinji he has over 100,000 subs right he still has more subs than me I would like to hit 100,000 subs so if you could do that for me that'd be crazy but anyway if we talk about why content creators quit the game I think it's a very similar reason to why just your average player ends up quitting the game and I think one of the biggest things with the rise of kingdoms that is is really hard for people to stick with is the fact that you have to like the events that happen in the game are going to happen whether you're there or not right like Ark of Osiris happens every weekend you're either there or you're not KBK is going to happen the passes are going to open whether you're there or not right and so if you really want to play Rise of Kingdoms if you really want to enjoy the game you have to kind of play it when the game like when things are happening in the game like I can't just decide that okay well today is a Thursday afternoon like I want to play Ark of Osiris today well you can't i want to do soroli crisis right now well okay let's see if i can do soroli crisis right now um it turns out i can't is it coming up anytime soon 
um it's not ian's ballot will be on monday so you know you know what i mean like these events we don't get to choose when the events come around and so in that regard like you kind of lose some time freedom when you're a dedicated player to rise of kingdoms and that's even more true if you're a content creator because you feel obligated to do all the things and to be you know as good of a player as you can be and to record as much as you can record and you don't want to miss certain things and i think that's really it's very hard to stick to that and have a normal life outside of it if that is your full-time job and just doing that for years on end and also like some of these events let's be real here okay if we take a look here like the greek event like this is going to be basically the same event that we've seen since the beginning of the game where they have these civilization themed events and you know some people just get bored of them right some people just get bored of doing ian's ballads over and over and over again because it's a very similar event to how it's always been mightiest governor has been here since the beginning wheel of fortune been here since the beginning there are some new things golden kingdom has been revamped but like at the end of the day like a lot of the game is still very similar now to how it was when it first came out and i mean take that with a grain of salt there's a lot that's different but like a lot of the events are very similar and because of that i think that some people just get bored right they get bored of whatever the meta is at the time they get bored with just doing the same kvks over again they get bored with you know whatever the case might be and i think that that definitely you know even just because you're a content creator doesn't mean you don't get bored of the game right like there's been times where i get bored of playing rise of kingdoms even though like this is my job like i have to do it there's just times where i'm bored and i and i don't want to play the game and i want to do something else right and so it really comes down to whether or not you can balance your boredom and kind of like spread out your excitement for the game now we've also had people leave for like you know health reasons and i think um i actually think dragothian was the one that that said he had like he had to do some sort of surgery and also like it's just not good being sedentary like sitting down all day and like you gotta you gotta get the blood moving and you gotta you know not only do i have to sit here and film the video but then after this i have to like edit the video and then i have to upload it and then think of like the title and then i have to make the thumbnail and the description and the chapters and the translations and like all you know so there's a lot of sitting and so it's not a very healthy life style to just sit around and play a video game all day and then on top of that there are financial reasons right other content creators might find out that you know they're not making enough money doing this full time or even part time to justify the amount of time that they spend doing it and on top of that they could just have a job outside of this that they get a promotion or they graduate from college or whatever the case might be and they get an opportunity to get a much higher paying job and it's like whoa i mean obviously you're gonna go with that right like you, your career is is more important if you feel like youtube isn't that end goal for you right and i don't know this for a fact but i think that's what happened with gecko right i think gecko was once he stopped being a sponsored creator i think his video output slowed down after a little while and i think he just makes more money i think he has a business or something like that like i think he just he just does better off doing something else right and so like what there's no reason why why would he keep making videos and spending all his time doing that when he has a better way to make money and make a living like it's a no-brainer right so there's a lot of reasons why you know other creators might quit and that brings me to the question of like when Am, am I quitting? Have I thought about quitting? Like what's going on there? Right? Well, I'm going to just put it out there right now and we'll talk about, you know, the different reasons here, but I don't have any plans on quitting the game. I mean, I don't foresee that being a thing. And the reason for that is because I think I've actually done a pretty good job with kind of keeping a separation between my personal life and rise of kingdoms right and what i mean by that is one thing a lot of you have noticed is that i don't stream my kvks i don't do it and the reason for that is because kvk is like the reason i play the game okay it gets me in voice chat with people like my friends from the game and it's a it's a goal we can all work towards and that's where i get to put my theory crafting to the test the months prior to kvk where i'm like testing out new commanders unlocking new things upgrading my gear kvk is the moment where i get to play the game like i get to actually play the game with that in mind that is like my sacred time with rise of kings and i know this is like super corny right but like it is important to me that i enjoy kvk as much as possible right because that is what i'm working towards and if there's anything in KVK that I don't like doing, I won't do it because it will sacrifice my enjoyment of the game. And one thing that, you know, makes it difficult to enjoy is if you turn on the stream and now not only are you playing kvk you also have to read the chat and you also have to kind of interact with the chat and be entertaining right i know like you might say well you don't really have to be entertaining you just have to stream it so we can watch that's fine but like i don't want to half-ass streaming it 
I don't. If I'm going to go live, I have the intention of like being entertaining and talking to you guys for however long I'm going to be live for, right? Which is why I only live stream when I feel like it. I don't have a schedule. I don't force it, right? And so for me, one of the things that prevents me from getting burnt out on the game is only creating content out of things that I want to create content out of. And that means that I don't want to be forced to be like, oh, well, I have to be live streaming for the past seven opening. It's like, no, I want to do the past seven and opening how I want to do it. If that means laying in bed and, and playing on my phone and just chilling, that's one thing. But for me, it's very important that I don't get burnt out from the game. And one of the fastest ways for me, just, just me personally, right? For me personally to not get burnt out is by not streaming kvk and you'll also notice on my profile i don't i don't actually i don't know if i hide this or not i have one arc of osiris win and one battle fought and this was i don't know 2021 or 2022 something like that i don't play arc of osiris and it's not because i don't like it arc of osiris is actually one of the most fun parts of the entire game and some people only play rise of kingdoms for arc of osiris like those weekly matches are like why they play the game right so i think arc of osiris is amazing but it's just another event that I don't get to control the time that I play it on the weekend. And first of all, for the longest time, I worked full time on the weekends. So like I legitimately couldn't play like there just wasn't unless I was waking up at four in the morning to play it like it wasn't going to happen. And I'm sorry, guys, but I'm not waking up at four in the morning for a video game. It just is what it is. Maybe if it's King's Land, I'll, I'll wake up at four in the morning. Maybe. OK, maybe that's a little bit of a, an exaggeration. I'll probably be there when pass is open for King's Land, even if it's at four in the morning. But you get my point. Okay? Okay. Ark of Osiris is another one of those things where I can't control if I do it or not. And I would rather now that my weekends are free because I do this full time, I would rather have full control over my weekend. I want to do whatever I want to do on the weekend. And if that means not playing Ark of Osiris, it is what it is, right? And I think there are, you know, there's a subsection of hardcore Rise of Kingdoms players that will look at my, you know, lack of Ark of Osiris attempts and criticize that, or they'll look at my lack of kill points and they'll criticize that, but that's fine. I, I really don't care. And the reason I don't care is because I'm playing the game how I want to play the game because it's a video game. It's for fun. You should play the game for fun. And I know there's a competitive aspect. And if you enjoy the competitive aspect, then that's great. And so do I, like I play, you know, I got 40 million kills in this KVK, right? So I still like that. And, and it's a very important to have that drive, but you have to know for yourself where you draw the line. And if that means that you're going to be less competitive and you should go to a C seed kingdom or a D seed kingdom, then so be it. Be honest with yourself and say, well, I'm just not that dedicated. Like I'll just go to a weaker kingdom and that's fine. As long as you enjoy the people you play with. So I'm very intentional with how and when I play the game and I don't want to get burnt out with it. So then the question becomes like, when will I quit the game? Right? Because like it is a game and games don't last forever. And I think that, you know, there's, there's really two things that could, could kill my enjoyment of rise of kingdoms. First of all, if the game dies on its own, then, you know, then that it is what it is. Like I'm, I'm going to play until, until it dies pretty much, which I don't think is going to happen anytime soon, by the way. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But the other thing is, you know, if there's another game that comes out that gets me as hooked as rise of kingdoms, if not more so then that's probably when I would stop playing the game. Now, obviously, you know, that game has to also be something I can make content about because that is my job, but maybe not. Maybe I'll just go back to working for a company and then I just do whatever. Right. So, you know, if there is a, another game that comes out, whether it's a city builder, whether it's a different type of mobile game, whether it's a PC game, whether it's an MMO, whether it's a world of Warcraft expansion, whatever it is, if there's a game that gets me just super addicted and I can also make content about it. Like that will be what pulls me away from rise of kingdoms. I'm just going to tell you that right now, but I'm going to be honest over the past five years, I've been looking for that game and I haven't found it. Right. So at a certain point, it's like, maybe, maybe I won't quit rise of kingdoms. Right. I keep trying all these new games and they just never pull me in like rise of kingdoms did. So, you know, maybe that game never, maybe that game doesn't exist. And if it doesn't, then I'll be playing rise of kingdoms until the game shuts down. But with that being said, you know, when will the game die? I think people have been asking that question since like the first KVK people have been asking when is rise of kingdoms dying? is rise of kingdoms dying, right? Like people have been asking this question since, you know, a few months after the game came out. And the truth is that I don't think this game is going to die over time. If they have lackluster updates or whatever, you know, the player base could stagnate or maybe it gets, you know, it declines a little bit, but truthfully, I don't think that the game will die because the game has survived some crazy updates. Like people hated crystal tech. People hate armaments and inscriptions and 
here we are like the game's not dead everyone keeps saying that the game's gonna die and it's not it's basically as healthy as it's been all year like there's really you know there's peaks and valleys to the performance of the game and the amount of people watching but like the the game is definitely not dead and i would argue it's still probably one of the most if not the most popular city builder game on mobile glo globally right so you know i just don't see i don't see the game dying now what I would love to see, and I talked about this in my most recent video, is a graphical update for the game. I think that if they want to bring back players that quit, and if they want to attract newer players to the game, a graphical overhaul is is got to be in the works, right? Like they got to get that out because that is, you know, I think that will breathe fresh life into the game and it'll bring a lot of players into the game. It'll basically put a new coat of paint on it and give it a new lease on life because we are approaching the sixth year anniversary for rise of kingdoms in you know what three or four months now and you know games that are six years old typically don't get as many new players as a game that's six weeks old right or six days old right new games when they launch they have this massive spike in popularity and if rise of kingdoms wants to have another big spike in popularity you know unless there's another like shut down and we have to stay inside which really i think that gave rise of kingdom such a massive competitive advantage over other games by the way like i think that kind of cemented rise of kingdoms as a as a powerhouse in the genre but regardless if rise of kingdoms wants to have another spike in popularity they gotta they gotta revamp the graphics of the game and if they can do that and they can pull it off without adding any sort of egregious you know updates to the game that players really hate um i think that will be going for another five years or more than that right because there is a very dedicated core fan base to this game that you know there there is people always talk about the sunk cost fallacy and like yeah i mean there is there is a sunk cost of the game right like a lot of times i try out a new game whether it's infinity kingdom whether it's land of empires call of dragons age of empires mobile like all the all these new games come out and they they kind of like try to compete with rise of kingdoms and whenever i post videos about them you know a lot of players they'll tell me like hey you know i would love to try this game but like i'm already so invested in rise of kingdoms that i just don't think i'm gonna do it right and so there is a sunk cost you know psychological trick going on there and the truth is that like that will keep a lot of people invested in the game for a really long time and so you know even if we don't get a graphical update i don't think rise of kingdoms is gonna go anywhere for the next like two or three years but if we do get a graphical update that will definitely like give it a nice bump in viewership and a nice bump in player base and that'll extend its life even longer and i really hope that that does happen because well they said it's gonna happen but also i'm pretty sure rise of kingdoms is still the most profitable game that lilith has made i know call of dragons was pretty successful and i know people do still play that game but it is definitely not as popular as rise of kingdoms at least not globally and so you know with that being said i know they released afk journey recently i think and i don't know how that's performing that might be performing really well i have no idea but you know they have they have a couple of different games under their belt but last time i checked rise of kingdoms was their most profitable game and so you would think that it would actually be smart for them to improve this game and get more people playing this game because something about this game just works really well and there's already a community here and they can make even more money off of it right if they just get if they make it even better so you know you would hope that that they would do that and i think that they you know they said they are they're working on it and so you know i hope that that happens soon and i'm really looking forward to it if and when it does and i think if we get that the game will be good for another couple of years and i'll continue to play it unless something else insane comes around and when it does you'll know if you subscribe to this channel and click the bell so you get notified the next time i upload a, a video that could be of a new game or not maybe we'll just keep playing rise of kingdoms together for the next five years and that could be what what happens but that's pretty much it guys i can't believe it's been 2000 days since i've been logging into rise of kingdoms like that's actually insane i covered pretty much everything i wanted to cover in this video if there's anything else that you want to know about me and my journey for this game for whatever reason you can comment it down below and then maybe i'll follow this up with like a q a video if you guys are interested in that type of thing i probably should have said this at the beginning of the video because lots of you aren't going to make it this far and you won't have posted a question but yeah it's been a crazy 2000 days and you know here is to 2000 more with that being said subscribe to the channel and while you're down there drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni arc i will talk to you guys again soon peace